Hello everyone, how are you doing? First of all, a very happy new year 2025 and this is the first video of the brand new year. Today we are going to talk about a bit underestimated topic from Next.js called Generate Static Params. If you have to build an application with a high performance and if you are looking for something like a pre-rendered route, then you will go for generate static params. We are going to talk a lot about it with examples and use cases so that you learn generate static params very, very well and start using in your project. Here are the things that we are going to focus in this video. We are going to start with why generate static params matters. What is generate static params after all? Then how to set it up? We will see a few examples with code and then we'll wrap up with some resources that you can look forward even after this video. So let's get started. Why generate static params matters? Imagine that you have a block page like a one that I'm showing you on your screen and you have multiple articles on this block page. You can click on any of the article post and can go to the details of this article to read about. Now, as this content in this article is static, you can pretty well build the route, the route that you are going to when you click on a particular article at the build time. You don't have to seek for this information when user clicking on it and you don't have to pull the information at the runtime. So traditional rendering where user click on something and then on demand you go fetch the data at the runtime is slow especially for the dynamic pages where you really care for SEOs. What is going to be of your benefit is you generate the route statically with the content in the build time. So you pre-render them and as you pre-render them, they open very fast, they are SEO friendly and they really improve the performance of your application. So this is why general static params matter a lot using which you can create pre-render routes at the build time instead of fetching the data dynamically on the runtime on demand. Let us now understand generous static params in code and see how to set it up with your Next.js project. All the code examples that I'm going to show you is with Next.js project using the version 15, which is the latest most while creating this video. And all the code you will find on my GitHub and the link to that particular repository is in the description of this video. The generic static params is a function that you have to export from your page. And this function is used in combination with dynamic route segment. We learned about dynamic route in the previous videos so that we can statically generate the routes at the build time instead of doing the same thing with on demand and the request time, which is slower. This function got a few specialties. It should return an array of object. As you are seeing here in this example, it is returning an array of object where each of the object represents the populated dynamic segments of a single route. What does it mean? In this particular example, there is a page and in this page, we are having a dynamic route called ID as you're seeing over here. Now what I'm saying that, hey, Next.js, statically build the route for product slash one, product slash two, product slash three. So it means whenever I'm going to give a dynamic route, say product slash one, product slash two, or product slash three, all those routes are statically generated at the build time. If I give product slash four, in that case, general static params is not taking care of that route. So that particular route will be on the runtime on demand. The data will be fetched and the page will be created, right? So let's run this page and see how things are coming up. As you're seeing here, I am now browsing to a route, say slash product slash one slash product slash one with the dynamic route will come to this page and it will identify that there is a generic static params defined over here and I'm telling Next.js to create slash product slash one slash two and slash three at the build time. So whenever I hit this slash product slash one or two or three, all of them are statically generated at the build time. If I go for four, this particular route is not statically generated. As I am showing the ID of it, just printing it over here, it is giving me the output, it is generating the page, of course, but it is dynamically at the runtime generated. That is the difference that you have to 
understand. Now consider that instead of this hard coded things over here, you are actually making an API call, an asynchronous call, and based on the return value from the asynchronous call, you will be able to generate the pages statically well before you go for your rendering, and that's the superpower of it. Let's see some more examples. In the previous example, we had a dynamic route, but it was of one level. We just had product slash ID. But in this case, we have a dynamic route, which is of multiple level. We have employees slash department slash city. And inside that, there is a page. So it means that we are looking for a route, which is like slash employees slash HR slash Bangalore or slash employees slash Dave slash Austria, things like that. So whenever we pass this dynamic data, whether a dynamic name of a department or dynamic name of a city, whenever we go to that particular page, taking that department name and city, we can do some rendering on that page. Now let's imagine that this is a page where you talk about certain rules and regulations and policies of a department which belong to a particular city. So that means the data that you will be putting in this page is quite static in nature. This might be an information that is publicly available and you want this particular page SEO to be really up. So here is the use case that you can create these routes, the multiple routes for this multiple dynamic route depth well in advance at your build time. We'll be using the same thing called generate static params in this case as well. And if you notice over here that previously when we were returning an array of objects from generate static params, we were just returning one key value pair from the object. We were returning ID colon one, ID colon two, ID colon three like that. But now as we have multiple levels, we are now returning multiple key value pairs from the single object. For department is one value, for city is another value. So like that, I have multiple routes to be created at the build time. So it means now Next.js will know with the help of generate static params, it can create a route says employees slash HR slash New York, employees slash finance slash Austria, employees slash Dave slash Bangalore. So all these routes will be pre-created for you at the build time. So if I try employees slash finance slash Austria, I'll see this message the employee works in the finance department. Austria because that's what I'm printing over here the department and the city if I just change it to dev slash Bangalore I will see these dynamic values rendered on the page again right so all these routes will be statically generated which is an awesome thing now let us see another example which is more close to the real world where you can use the generic static params to make an asynchronous call and get the result of that asynchronous call and use that result of the asynchronous call to create your dynamic route segments that is statically generated pre-rendered at the build time. This is what you will be doing mostly because your data might be on some data store. You have to fetch that with asynchronous call, yet you have the power of creating this pre-rendered routes so that it is SEO friendly and the application performance also improves. By the way, if you are liking this video, if you're liking this teaching, please let me know with a comment, please post a like. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe because that motivates a lot to create quality content for you. Here I have an example of a category which is dynamically passed to create the route and inside that there is a page.js. As I open the page.js file, let's go through the code. Same file generate static params and we're exporting it as usual from this particular page. The page is slash category value. The category can be history, geography, whatever it is, some kind of category that this particular API returns me. We are doing a fetch call, an asynchronous call on this URL and then this URL is supposed to return me a bunch of posts, an array of posts and the data of each of the posts. Then I'm mapping it through each of the post data and then taking out the category from each of the post data and returning a category object so that finally whatever I return from this generic static params, it will be an array. In that array, there will be object and each of the object will have category as a property and its category value as the value. Let's quickly see what exactly this API returns. As you see here on the right side, it returns an array, array of post and each of the post is having these attributes. One of the attribute is category and this is what I am now mapping through and creating an array of category object. This is what finally I'm returning from here. So it means now next days will be creating the pre-rendered, the statically rendered routes for you at the build time 
for each of these categories that is returned from this API call. Isn't it awesome? So it means that every time I go to a page, the content of the page is pre-rendered. It is SEO friendly. It is performant. It is fast and it is really, really awesome. So this is what it is doing. In this particular page, I'm just rendering the category name over here. So let's do localhost 3000 slash travel. I get travel over here because travel was one of the category and I'm able to print it, right? Now, this is a pure use case where you will be fetching the data asynchronously and using that you can create pre-render route. You make your application SEO friendly. You don't fetch this particular details based on the category or the category details on the runtime by making an asynchronous call, right? You don't do that. I hope it was useful. Now, there are a few more things I want to teach you. As you have seen before that we had route like slash product slash one slash product slash two, its ID, and we had generated the route for one, two, three, but still the route four was getting generated on the runtime. Now, there might be a situation where you might want to limit the number of route that you want to statically generate out of the data that you get. Or the second situation could be that you don't want to generate any of the routes that is created on the runtime. Right. So let's see the configuration for both one by one. So let's talk about the first configuration here. I am getting all the post. So when you get all the post, I'm interested in generating the pre-rendered route or statically generated route at the build time only for the categories for first two posts. Rest of it, I'm fine generating dynamically. So in that case, the situation is very simple. You got all the posts over here and then you can do something like a slice, slice the array to have only first two elements from this array. Now this top post will have only the first two elements and instead of using the post, now you will be using top post. So from now onwards, if you do slash technology, you will get this particular route pre-rendered generated. If you do slash health and fitness, it will be generated. But if you do food and cooking, it won't be generated, right? So localhost 3000 slash technology will give you the technology category information. And this is statically generated. But if I do travel now, instead of technology, this is not statically generated. This is I'm fetching dynamically on the runtime. Now, there might be a situation where you want to say that my application care for SEO very much so that I don't want to dynamically generate anything on demand. Everything should be statically generated. For that, you can do this particular configuration at the top of your page, say export const dynamic params equals to false. Now, if you do that, I know that this travel is dynamically generated on the runtime because travel is not part of the first two posts, the top post that I have created. It was technology and the fitness. So now if I try to access travel, I would get 404 because this is no more generating anything that is dynamic route and served at the runtime. It is only going to give me something which is statically generated. So if I go back to technology instead of travel, I will still get technology back. You see the difference? I hope you learned something new. If you want to learn further, you can go to Next.js documentation. This link is in the description of this video. Most of the items I have already covered with examples and use cases, but you might find something extra that you can learn further from this particular documentation. And if you like my teaching and if you learn something good, please post a like, please give a comment. I'll be really happy to get the feedback from you, like how it helped you. And then finally, please subscribe to TapaScript because TapaScript is going to offer a lot in this brand new year. Stay with me. Keep learning.